Ahem. This thing on? All right. Statutory disclaimer and opening statement. The Zombaloo Destroyer show is for iguanas only. Please tail whip and claw your pet humans until they leave the room before you listen, because this show is not intended for lesser sorts of creatures like humans, chimpanzees, other mammals, wallabies, cockatiels and other birds, frogs, newts, eels, fish, snakes, or geckos. No geckos. Nada. Go away, you revolting little freaks. Are they all gone now? Humans and geckos alike and all the rest of them? Gone? Okay. Then we can begin. Howdy, you're listening to the Zomala Destroyer Show, a podcast by an iguana for iguanas talking about important iguana stuff and issues. I am your host, Zomo, perfection itself. You ought to know me from the comic I used to appear in, Zomala Destroyer, but if not... Ah, oh God, what the hell's wrong with you? But I guess you could catch yourself up at ZomaLaDestroyer.com if you need to. Sorry, excuses for iguanas if you don't know my comic. Anyway, it's so cold this time of year. Last week here in Vancouver, it was below freezing. It's not that bad this week, but then the rains came. So it sucks just as bad, even though it's not as cold. And I know a common question I get in the mailbox is why. Why is it that when you get further from the equator, it gets colder? Well, the answer is simple. It's because of communism. It's true. Commies love cold. That's why the further you get from the equator, the more likely you are to find yourself in a frozen communist hellhole. You know, like China or Russia or Norway. Now, I know what you're thinking. Norway and the mother dumb blonde countries up there are socialists, not communists. But really, it's the same thing. They're all pinkos or reds. It's only minor differences, really not worth bothering about what the difference is. They're all the same. Basically, though, I think the difference is, for socialists, the commies figured out that if you call it socialism and you allow a few pretenses of freedom, the monkeys won't rebel. But it's still communism, and they still like the cold. So first you get the commies taking over. Then they screw with things like the weather machine to make it cold enough for their liking. It's happening here in Canada, too. We got them watermelons. You know, they pretend to be all green power and stuff on the outside. But really, they're just commies seeking to block global warming so that the country becomes as cold and empty as their own shallow souls. Well, I guess in Canada you'd say, so it stays that cold and empty. Basically, never believe a monkey when it says it believes in green power. You know, iguanas, they don't mean the same thing we do. When we say green power, green power, green power, we're talking about the glorious reptile revolution. We mean we want a warm climate where iguanas can run rampant over the entire world and take over and instill a new sororocracy where mammals like them who get out of line get stomped on or eaten or whatever. But what the watermelons mean is they want electricity from non-fossil fuel sources. See, that way they can surf the web for porno on five big screen monitors in high definition. But it won't help make the planet warmer. See, it'll all be run on wind power, so the planet won't get any warmer. And even the screens, they're going to be like LED ones that don't get hot or anything, unlike the old cathode ray tube screens, which were good. We liked the cathode ray tubes because then if you ran them long enough, the room in them or the room around them would get warm. But not these new uh, kinds of energy efficient screens, you see. So the planet doesn't get any warmer. So us iguanas still won't be able to take over. Therefore, the watermelons are our enemies. They don't want anyone driving Hummers to speed up the global warming. They don't want us to take over at all. Now, it wouldn't be as terrible if the watermelons and other assorted commie scum just up and moved to Siberia and the other northern frozen wastelands, you know, like Denmark, where they could be with their own kind. But no, no, they want to stay put and they want to wreck things for the rest of us. They want the whole planet covered in six feet of snow. And that's just for a start. And don't go anyone talking about, oh, it's warm in Cuba, but they're commies. 
That's just because they're the dumb commies there. They haven't figured out how to work the weather machine to make it cold in the Caribbean yet. Actually, you know, I think they're a sleeper cell. They're there to make everyone think that commies aren't out to instill an evil new ice age to ruin millions of iguanas' lives. And then when everyone's been lulled into a false sense of security, they pounce and suddenly you have snow in Atlanta. Yeah, that's right, I said it. That snow in Atlanta a little while back, that was a trial run of the Cuban commie weather machine. I ain't joking. This is a very serious issue we iguanas face. Imagine if it started snowing in Florida. Our advanced uh, troop movements would be totally screwed. and We wouldn't be able to get any further in. We might even be beaten back right out of North America entirely. Very serious issue. We have to fight it. So what can you do as the individual iguana? Well, first you got to be on the lookout for signs that your pet monkey might be a commie or a commie-leaning pinko in need of brain fixing. Common signs include things like voting for the local Bolshevik party. You know, like um, here in Canada, it's the NDP. And uh, I think in America, they're called Democrats. Um, Other signs, if they drive a hybrid car, mm -mm -mm, that's no good. You've got to fix them. If they own an air conditioning unit. I know we've all discussed this before, but yeah, something ain't right about a monkey who's making it cold in July inside. Similarly, if they complain about the heat in the summer, that's a warning sign. you got to deal with that. you got to nip that shit right in the bud. And in the winter, if they don't want to heat the entire house to a nice moderate, you know, nothing too crazy or too hot, but, you know, a nice moderate 29 degrees Celsius, it's a very pleasant uh, 84, 85 degrees Fahrenheit for our friends living in America, I think that's a perfectly reasonable compromise. And if they won't do it, I don't care what excuse the monkey gives, but ooh, the cost of the heating bill. That's just a red herring. You got to nip that shit in the bud. You got to tell them who's boss. You don't tolerate that crap from them monkeys. Little tells like that are the ones that warn you that you may need to start beating some sense into your pet monkey and blocking the MSNBC from coming in the cable box. And that brings me to my next point. You gotta monitor their entertainment preferences for signs that they're under the influence of known or suspected commies. You know, like the monkey who pays for my web hosting and who um, posts this show for me and whatnot. She likes, uh, what's his face? You know the guy, he used to be in that band, the really famous one. You know, they have that big song, um, something about a jungle, but not like a real jungle. Um, but anyways, then he quit the big famous band to have his own band, which never did become famous in its own right. And then he even quit his own band and just his solo stuff. But every so often when he needs the money, he'll go and do a guest appearance with the big famous band. Yeah, him. Anyway, he has a couple songs complaining about warm weather. One of them's even called Too Hot. And he's bitching about it. It's too hot for him. He also has a song about snow, which would be one thing if it was a euphemism and he was actually singing the praises of one of Columbia's prime exports. But I think it it seems based on the lyrics, I think he means it literally, you know, about the frozen water falling from the sky kind of snow. Also, I think he married some Danish or Norwegian bimbo. So, yeah, I can't prove what's-his-face is a commie. He's probably a pinko. Definitely votes Democrat, though. Definitely on that. And not a, definitely not a good influence on the monkey's brain. You know, she's got enough bad ideas of her own. I don't need her getting any new bad ideas suggested to her. So anyway, when one of his songs comes on, I throw a hissy fit until the monkey flips it to some good, respectable music that supports the iguana agenda. You know, like Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent's really cool. He shoots a lot of mammals. He hates commies. And I think he even has a Hummer. What's not to love? Oh, so anyways, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So we all got a band together to stop the monkeys from turning commie and blocking the global warming. Every iguana, 
do your part. Anyways, before I get back to doing my part, how do you think I got to have a little nap? <laughs> Build up my energy to fight the commies and go back to fighting the thermostat wars with my monkey. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to I on the iTunes uh, to this show. Just search Sama the Destroyer. And uh, as always, if your pet monkey snoops your iTunes, we don't want that. We don't want them listening. So instead, you go to my website, zombalthedestroyer.com, and you can grab individual episodes there or stream it or whatever. Also, tell all your friends, your iguana friends, that is. Iguana want to see them subscribers' numbers climbing higher and higher. Get the message out. Anyways, that's it for this week's show. Talk at you again next Sunday.